Greetings, dear fans, followers, friends, family, frenemies, acquaintances. Yes, we do have a full spectrum experience of so many different interactions and roles on this planet Earth. I hope you are doing well. I am your man in the Watchtower. We talk about the nature of the times in these videos. I know I started my last video off mentioning my ethereal constipation due to the intensity of holy shift that's taking place at this time. And well, here we go again. Now, the moon's nodes have just shifted zodiac polarity in this last week, coming out of the Gemini Sagittarius polarity and in to the Taurus Scorpio polarity. I am essentially a moon's nodal astrologer. This is the absolute foundation and backbone of so much of the astrology readings I do, both for individuals and the collective. I find it's fascinating to notice these moon's nodal shifts that occurs roughly every one and a half years, every 18 months. These are our eclipse cycles, okay? I find that the nodal polarity is almost like an underlying fabric of reality for our experience. It's almost like the base canvas of a painting has just shifted. Now the moon's nodes were in the Gemini Sagittarius polarity from May of 2020 through this last several days. This is what's just completed and culminated. This last 18 months has been along the lines of the teacher polarity. Gemini Sag are the two hemispheres of the brain. There's been a learning how to communicate, connect, share ideas, come into our unique interests. And I find it personally interesting how I receive these reflections back from my life and the universe, which is nearly constant for my own personal experience. But while the North Node was completing its transit of Gemini, I had all this feedback, people saying, thank you for your teachings. You are such a brilliant mind. I appreciate your mercurial perspective. And now we've shifted nodes. That South Node went into Scorpio and it's almost like I've been a garbage can <laughs> for people's you know, bitterness or discontent. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> These are some of the new nodal lessons that are just being introduced. You see, uh, COVID was actually while the moon no moon's nodes was still in the Cancer Capricorn polarity, you know, 2018 into 2019 into 2020. There's this security axis and survival and, you know, needing to reconnect with the family and all of this prioritization around job and money you know that was born covid under the moon's nodes in cancer capricorn last year and a half gemini sagittarius now through july of 2023 the moon's nodes in the taurus scorpio polarity it's like that underlying canvas beneath the painting has swapped and everything's different everything feels different fundamentally because we're actually introducing a new evolutionary direction. Everything that we're experiencing are going to carry these nodal themes. That's why I do call myself a moon's nodal astrologer. This is where life is directing us, where we're going to get lessons. And the Taurus Scorpio polarity has so much more to do with coming into our body, our senses, our center, to come into our power, our mastery, which comes out of the full spectrum experience and intensity of life. It's like the tumbler births the gem, is the Scorpio Taurus polarity. This is the polarity of the Buddha's enlightenment, who is trying to get enlightened Scorpio ascetic path, experience the death, the sickness, the intensity personally in his bones, in his body. Then a girl brings the Buddha a bowl of rice, Taurus comforts his body, his stomach, his senses, his nervous system relaxes, Taurus. He returns to his center, enlightenment, raises his consciousness. This is the polarity of Taurus Scorpio. We can already be tuning into and sensing the tumbler, the drama, the chaos, the intensity, the need to pull out of the frying pan, the need to create a center via our own value system, which keeps us tethered to the earth 
in a sovereign, self-resourceful type of way that's not so dependent on the chaos that's going to be going on in the world. This nodal theme just being introduced now is really being brought into our consciousness via Venus, the ruler of the North Node in Taurus, stationing direct. Mercury is going to station trying the North Node in Taurus, particularly this coming summertime, May season. We'll have our next set of eclipses, and that in particular is going to introduce this Taurus-Scorpio theme I just spoke to. Again, the tumbler produces the gem pulling ourselves out of the frying pan of intensity, which is also here to be experienced. Scorpio is also intimacy and close corners, claustrophobic types of environments and situations. It's also power dynamics, um, you know, the actual motivations of what catalyzes our soul, which can be very unconscious, mysterious, complex, multifaceted. So we're all getting these themes introduced. Now, again, big shift going on, you know, these weeks, generally, January to February, and there's, as we'll talk about, a tremendous clarity that can come out even through this exposure of what's going on beneath the surface. Now, the last several days, both Mercury and Mars entered into Capricorn, the 24th to the 25th of January. This is also an elemental movement towards Earth, you know, getting more pragmatic, getting more real. And we'll come back to that, because again, there's a tremendous clarity, as well as an exposure of reality. What you see is what you get. Certainly a theme, end of January through start of February, 2022. But I must shine a spotlight on Venus, who is stationing direct this coming weekend, the 29th of January. Venus has been retrograde since mid-December. Okay, this has been so much the centerpiece of these videos as I've spoken them the last uh, couple of months. You know, this healing of the heart, returning to center, finding our value system, the themes, our relationship, money, exchanging of resources. Is this an even give and take? Who can we trust? How can we build these connections? How can we support one another? These have been the questions of the last couple of months. Now, Venus stationing direct this coming weekend. Now is the time of returning to center. Now is the time of clarity. And the bottom line of this Venus Direct is we can now form structure for new ways of exchanging. Job, money, commitments that incorporates our individual values. Every single human being is unique. We're not created to be the same thing. We're not in tune with the same dimensions. We do not have the same taste. We do not have the same attractions and repulsions. Therefore, creating structure in relationship or creating an if, even give and take of money or resources is a process. And this is the process of Venus retrograde. We've been returning to our center. We've been finding trust in ourselves. We've been dusting off the mirror of our own internal value system, sense of taste, and what really gives us a structure of identity, how we live our life, what we consider tasty or enjoyable. This can be uh, creating structure for increased pleasure, support, commitments in relationship. But this is very much a healing journey. Now, end of January, Venus stationing direct at 11 degrees Capricorn is where Venus was mid-November when she first squared Chiron and entered her shadow phase. Venus will station direct this coming weekend, square to Chiron, also trine to Uranus. Now, this is a healing of the heart, where there may have been prior blockages, where there may have been a theme of distrust, unequal exchange. There is this healing of the heart. There's the exposure of where there may be the distrust the power dynamics and struggles, the unconscious manipulation or taking control of that may come from prior wounding experiences. Or certainly, this can be a period of processing 
our prior relationships? Why do these interactions happen the way that they have? How can we change these interactions to be something different in the future? So there has been an exploration of heart hurt. Our most recent full moon was in Cancer. Mercury uh, and Venus have been very much in the sign of Capricorn, where Venus is stationing direct, where Mercury is stationing direct. You know, again, this is the security axis. This again was a theme during COVID is we can be exploring these themes of where we provide security, where we give security, where we need security. And again, some of these themes that may have come up is it's like we're thawing the ice wall around the heart. We're having to create new interactions that are gonna rewrite the story of where there's been past traumas or negative interactions, which of course we're here to experience. We have to give ourselves maximum flexibility, especially when this Saturnarian type of coldness can come up. It's a natural protection and barrier we formed around our heart because we've lived in a world where it has been a dog eat dog fight to survive. We haven't had mommy and daddy attending to every waiting need, right? And so we're exploring these themes of where we may have lacked that need or where we may have given. And this is where these themes of being taken for granted. Cancer is those that provide the maternal, emotionally secure, you are safe to feel, come into my home, put your feet up on the couch, I'll cook you some warm soup and you can tell me your story. You can feel safe. You can even express any emotion that you're feeling and you're safe to feel that. It's okay, you'll always be, you know, a part of my family. That is this warm, maternal, cancer-like expression in my highly cancer souls, many of which follow these videos. We give this, we give this, we give this. Other people need it, other people take it, and it's like we can feel taken for granted. It's just like there's no respect. What are we just supposed to have infinite capacity to give forever to everybody and everybody's a baby and we're everybody's mom and similarly there can be the experience of being taken for granted in a Capricorn type of way like are you serious I've spent so many years going to school building this business doing this work doing all of this service and then where's the recognition and I'm like competing with people that you know took a 30-day course just yesterday and they're saying the same things and they're acting the same way and they don't, haven't done any work and I've been out in the world surviving by myself. I didn't even have a family to take care of me. I learned to survive on my own. I do all of this stuff and then all of these people come up and they don't know how to take care of themselves at all. So again, these are some of the ice wall that we've been facing, that we've been thawing. And now Venus is stationing direct, Mercury is stationing direct, and there can be a tremendous amount of clarity. This is wonderful. This is exactly what we want, as much as I'm also going to mention that clarity, despite it being something we need and is a life-saving quality in our life, it can also be very challenging to see things very clearly. Regardless, this changing and being reconcocted can introduce new possibilities new ways of being in relationship, new ways of giving and receiving support to have better exchange that's more equal, more balanced. A balance of listening, a balance, a balance of speaking, a balance of giving, a balance of taking, and we've had to learn our individual unique taste, qualities, and skills to be able to show up and provide this. This is the healing of the heart. This Venus stationing kind to Chiron, it is the reality that we will experience pain and pleasure in our loving relationships. The people that we love are oftentimes the people we experience the most heart-shattering life experience with, you know, yes or no. This is a reality of love. It's not an enabling of abuse or oppressive relationships, no. But even despite this, love is where we explore our scariest places. Love is where we're safe to be invited to show up in our most vulnerable, delicate, threatening areas. And again, where we're exploring, thawing this ice wall, getting these triggers is in the area of Saturn, Capricorn, authority, power, structure. How do we build something that can last the testament of time? How can we actually create structure 
so we can stand amidst the rapids of life. And Saturn is stone cold. What you see is what you get. We all have responses that's going to bring us into this coldness, this disassociation, this spinning out, emotional reactions. And the best thing that we can do is create containers to be in those reactions, to be in that coldness, to feel absolutely terrible when we go into our temper tantrum or angry tyrant or whiny baby. You know, it's like we are all going to have that facet of ourself. We can call it the shadow, whatever. It's the wounded inner child. It's coming from the past. We have these areas that we explore through our loving relationship. We're learning how to support and exchange resources to be in our talents and our gifts and not be inauthentic and have to fake it and be in someone else's life, someone else's shoes, living someone else's job. Well, there's this pain and this pleasure in recognizing that everybody's different. And we'll face this in any group environment, any community, any relationship. These are the areas that we are similar or mirroring. These are the areas where we're completely opposite and we can fill in the gap for one another. But there is a level of clarity that in a Saturn Capricorn type of way can be a little bit, you know, coming back down to reality. Heck, it can even be a little bit disappointing when we confront Saturnarian limitation, which is to also honor the reality that we're born into, which is to help inform and reflect back to us how we can create these structures, how we can lay these boundaries that preserve the essence of who we are so we don't lose ourselves to the other or to the world that's around us. And this is the very deep and amazing healing coming out of this Venus retrograde is this is the initiation of return to center and with a deeper self trust, we can show up without getting thrown off of our feet. When we're challenged, when we receive projection, when there's assumption, we have to know ourselves, who we are, what we're made of, what we're all about so we can stand our ground, so we can retain our center, and then we can do energy exchange. And then we can lay a structure for relationship that actually works. And that is what comes out of all of this journeying and healing. You see, we're creating support structure again for this pain, this reality, this being a human and living a human life and understanding our limitations and understanding what we have to give. We're working with what we have. We are accepting the cards that we have had dealt. Saturn Capricorn. This is the time to clearly see it and accept the materials that we are working with. This can lay an incredibly strong and functioning structure. So again, Mercury and Mars, 24th to 25th, going into the Earth sign of Capricorn. Real, pragmatic, what you see is what you get. Then Mercury stations direct on the 11th, conjunct, I'm sorry, Mercury stations direct on February 3rd, conjunct Pluto. So Mercury, Pluto, pragmatic, powerful, scrutinizing, penetrative mind, communication, interactions, and insights. Again, what we're seeing is reality. What we're getting is clarity. The underlying feeling can be a bit of it is what it is. So in the coming days, Mercury retrograde passes Pluto the 28th, and then Mercury will pass Pluto again February 11th. Last two weeks of January, first two weeks of February, we have this powerful, penetrative, realistic mind. This is, again, showing up in our interactions. It's like, wow, we have all of these different interactions. People are of different distances, proximities. People have different feedback. And we're learning from all of this information. But we can understand why. It's like there is a x-ray machine that is revealing the underlying structure. It's like, hey, this is the skeletal structure that's inherent in myself, that's inherent in this relationship, these exchanges. 
friends, ideas, communication. Heck, this could just be about communication. We can really take these things personally. It's going to be really important for us to give ourselves uh, and others a breather. Because, man, Mercury, Pluto can really lay it out. Very sharp tongue. Very intense. And the point is, this is about communication. This clarity is good. We need to be authentic in our communication. We need to lay it out. Now is the time. It's not the time to hide. It's not the time to sugarcoat it, make it sound all flowery. No, I mean, these are, again, going to be sharp, penetrative insights. But how we communicate is essentially going to be how effective we get our message across and, and how well it's received. You know, part of this Capricorn time is we're asking questions. How do we handle power and authority? How do we deal with powerful authorities? Do we know the authority within ourself? Can we be in our authority enough to know our limits? How to control outcomes enough to show up in life in a mature and a responsible way? So, you know, a powerful authority. It's like, hey, if you're, you know, having a date, or I should say, you know, you have a court date with the military general and you want to change something, are you going to go to war with the military general? I, I, is that going to work the best way? It's like, I see some of these, and I mentioned this in a prior video, it's like the relationship to Saturn, I say, is you have to give to Caesar what is Caesar's. This is going to lead into the some of the new moon theme conjunct Saturn and Aquarius too. It's like, if we want to make change, we need to embrace the rebel that wants to make change. We feel the imprisoningness. We don't feel free. That freedom merge and that discontent says, fuck this, you know, rebel, break the rules, let's change it. But we also have to not throw the baby out with the bathwater, not just declare war on the system or try to burn it down. You know, it's like how we saw the Capitol building riots here in the United States. And it's like, that's what I'm talking about. We can't handle Saturn in that way. Or I saw, you know, the YouTube vid of the stoner goes into the courthouse and he's complaining about the fact that he, you know, got a ticket for smoking weed and he busts out a joint and starts smoking weed in the courthouse. And it's like, you know, that's a statement you can make, but could there be a more effective way of making this statement? And we need to give each other leeway because it is a sharp tongue. It is an instinctual, penetrative mind. And, you know, it does sound a little bit more like that Chicago gangster I mentioned in the last video. Uh, you know, that's going to stay with us through, you know, Mercury goes back into Aquarius on the 14th. So we just got to get down with it. But we also need to be very self-forgiving, flexible of others. And understanding that there is a level of reality, which is hard. You know, if the universe wants us to receive clarity as it does now, it may simply feel like we are getting smacked in the face. These are patterns that are inescapable because they are rooted in the soul. These are dynamics that are important to look at as much as they also may be painful because maybe they're things we don't want to see in ourselves or maybe these are patterns that feel a bit redundant. Regardless, these are the things we can't escape. We have to embrace this facet of reality. Again, all of this stuff with uh, Venus stationing on Pluto, now Mercury stations on Pluto, Capricorn, Saturn, it's dealing with power, authority, structure, and this is some of the more challenging facets of life. So I'll give you an example of how we relate to Saturn and Pluto. Before anybody can schedule a one-on-one -on -one reading with me, I have clients sign a karma contract. And essentially what this contract is saying is you're not going to come and get a reading with me and then I'm going to make decisions for you. That's not my responsibility. You are responsible for the decisions that you're making in your life. And I, I say this because obviously there's so many people that are addicted to fortune tellers, tarot readers, and astrologers, and they give away their power. Well, I would not be a helpful astrologer if I'm just swallowing people and telling them what to do and they're not using their power. I try to maintain a healthy relationship with clients, which says, well, you know, I can pass off some reflections but I'm not going to make major decisions for you. You need to make those decisions for yourself. 
One of the realities of astrology is it brings a level of clarity that's almost hard to believe. And clarity is so important. This clarity that astrology reflects back, it can make our life so much infinitely easier. It's like the difference between flying blind or flying with a map. That's the difference that this clarity brings to our total understanding of life. And yet, does that clarity necessarily have to be easy right away? <laughs> Oh, no, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Sometimes when people are interpreting their chart for the first time, and usually we're looking at these cookbooks, we look up our Saturn by house and sign, and that's a depressing moment. <laughs> I remember the first time I read my Saturn in an astrological cookbook. <laughs> my guess is there's a few others who may have shared this experience. <laughs> so again, there is these levels of reality where we may wake up to it's like, oh my gosh, we have this real limitation. Oh my gosh, we really did have this card dealt to us. And that is the nature of the human being. We have to embrace limitation because this is what creates the boundaries and the form to have a shape, to be a being, to have an individual. Hey, we don't even have an experience of lover and beloved if there's no definition that's separating us. But again, this inherently can also be painful and sad at times. This is the reality of Saturn. It's like, it's real, and it brings us down back into our body and our senses. My friends, family, acquaintances, frenemies, let this reality, clarity, truth, of time, form, limitation, the reality that it's not such a fantasy. We are human beings. We're doing the best that we can. Even the people who are in authority positions, they're not just necessarily possessed by the devil or an extraterrestrial race. These too are oftentimes people the best that they can with what they have. And they may have had some hard cards dealt to them, like being born into Illuminati families, etc. So there's a reality that is more real and it can you know, bring us back to our senses. This can be a, a cooling relief from the agitation, the unrealistic overexcitement, the overstimulation that may be attempting to cover the bullshit, the reality. And reality is settling. In a South Node Scorpio type of way, we can escape into drama or intensity as opposed to owning our own soul's path or what it is we really need like we can run off into someone else's drama and avoid the fact that we feel empty and aren't having what we need well we have to again honor the individuality honor the reality of structure form and limitation then we can be a defined individual then we can know what we need know how to speak up for what we need know how to provide is the other half of this what comes out of the boundaries the definition knowing who we are is what we've got the gems and the treasures that come from what we're born to be. Not inauthentically fitting the same energy levels, the same sensitivities that others have. We are going to be unique and embracing our sensitivities. Embracing even the challenging cards that we've had dealt will reveal the hidden blessings. Okay, so I talked about conveying the powerful insights that can come being our authority for our own ship. Authorities get blamed. Army generals get blamed. How do we deal with our own authority? How can we challenge authority in a productive, healthy way that is effective, that's going to send the right messages so that way we can co-create change? And that leads into our new moon. February 1st, if you're in the United States, early in the morning. This is a new moon at 12 degrees Aquarius. This is on the south node of Neptune, closely conjunct Saturn and square to Uranus. Now there's a very interesting dynamic here where there's this Saturnarian pressure, the reality, the gravity, the cooling effect, the accepting our boundaries. When we accept those boundaries and limitations, it's a relief. It's like, we don't have to be a superhero. We don't have to be Jesus. You know, it's like, it's okay. This is our part. This is our will. This is what we're meant to do. We don't have to do everything. 
but there's this depressing effect. And then there's also the limitation where we feel this isn't enough. We have unmet needs. This is not the right community. This is not the right place. This is not the right group. And that creates a loaded spring that wants to lift off. So Saturn's like, we got to build this. We got to make this in reality. Uranus says, but it's got to change and we've got to reinvent it. And it's like this process of freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw. The image that comes to mind is like a frozen ocean where you see the front wave comes crashing in, then it freezes and rolls back and then comes in. It's like, that's going to be the actual energetic process that we're using, you know, uh, through February. This is really going to kick off Aquarius season when we have this new moon on February 1st or the last day of January if you're in um, the other side of the planet. Okay. Mars squares Chiron, first week of February on the 6th, also trying Uranus, February, Earth. Let's be very gracious with energy levels. They can spike, they can shift. Reactivity can be there. We're charged, we're fighting, we're depressed, we want to hide. This is, again, going to open up the doorway to new possibilities of relating with our energy, dealing with our individuality, how we are relating our individuality to others. This is, in and of itself, the Aquarian theme. This new moon in Aquarius is the opportunity to sow a seed for a new structure, Saturn, that is liberating, progressive, and introducing new possibilities, Aquarius. This is also going to be a time very much sowing a seed for community, networking, how we're giving and exchanging information. Again, this Venus retro is how we as individuals can form new supports in relationship. This is also so much the archetype of Aquarius. How are we connecting the dots of different pioneers, geniuses, teachers? We want to form a new world. We want to form a, a new paradigm. We want to heal from trauma. Trauma is new. We haven't learned how to create community. We haven't learned how to heal each other's traumas yet. This is new. This is an experiment. That is the freeze thaw. It's this trial and error, experimental, push it forward, roll it back, have the conversation, revise it, test out the group, test out the experiment, put the information out there in a different way. This gives us different feedback and then we revise. It's like a potter at the wheel, shaping, shaping what we're working on. But this is community building time. This is network building time. And it's the time to push forward a new reality. This square to Uranus, this new moon in Aquarius is like Lily Wonka's great glass elevator penetrating that gra gla glass ceiling. And now this elevator introduces new dimensional possibilities. It does not only go up and down, it can go sideways, diagonal wise, lengthwise, etc. That's Uranus. So again, we've got to make it real. We can't just dream it and pretend the way I hear some of the people say, if you, you can create anything, you can create anything and do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so I can climb a skyscraper, jump off, grow wings like a bird and fly around. I don't think so. We're all born in a very real limitation. We have to know those limits and those boundaries if we're going to create anything, if we're going to have any healthy exchange, right? And yet we're all so open. We can invent wings. We can design flying machines. We can create structures that will introduce new possibilities that can actually work. This is a very exciting, groundbreaking, revolutionary new moons. My magicians, witches, wise souls, you know what to do. Sow your seed intentions for this type of reinventing and experimentation that can begin and unfold throughout the month of February and certainly into March when Venus and Mars and Aquarius are together and experimenting and introducing new possibilities. So again, holy shift, a lot of shift going on these weeks. I am wishing you all the best. I hope that you get something useful to take away from these videos. I'm not going to put so much of a public announcement out there. I do see a lot of structural changes coming to my Rasa Leela community website in the forthcoming weeks. So maybe the one hint I'll drop is you may want to get on the community and participate in my Astro School before 
those structural changes roll out. But in that suspense, I'll leave you till next time. Again, wishing you all the best. Take care.